Welcome to Malifaux University. 403. Burying and Unburying. Burying and unburying models has the potential to be one of the most challenging aspects to a game of Malifaux. Only a relatively small fraction of models use this game effect, so it's quite possible to play for a great while and never have to deal with it. In this video, we will present the summarized rules for burying and unburying, then go through detailed examples of each rule in play. Buried models are like Schrodinger's cat. They are both in play and not in play at the same time. They are removed from the playing area, but not the game. When you bury a model, you take it off of the table. It may be helpful to place it on the model's stat card if you're using physical cards. If you're not using cards, keep the model where you'll remember to count it among your models in play when calculating pass tokens. One somewhat positive aspect of being buried is that buried models cannot be targeted with actions or abilities unless those game effects specifically say they can target buried models. If they do, then the usual targeting factors like range and line of sight don't matter. Buried also gets around effects that limit targeting, like stealth. The buried model will still need to activate like other models, though they cannot take any actions that do not clearly say they can be used while buried. Since buried models are everywhere and nowhere at the same time, game effects related to the position of the targeted model are ignored. Buried models cannot be further buried, and unburied models cannot be further unburied. Any game effect that would bury a model that is already buried, or unbury a model that isn't buried, is simply ignored. The rest of the action or ability may still take place. Buried models return to the table only through an unbury effect. This is usually explicitly stated on the model's card and will say how and where the model is unburied. You may find it in the same game effect that buries the model, in another ability on the front of the card, or possibly even on an attached upgrade. If the model cannot be placed according to the unbury specifications, then the controller of the unbury effect places the model anywhere in the unburying model's deployment zone. If some game effect would prevent a model from moving, a buried model can still unbury. Unburying is a place, which is a type of movement, but it's still special enough to get around moving restrictions we'll discuss later. If a model is killed while buried, it is really, really removed from the playing area and never leaves a marker since it wasn't really on the table. If a model is buried when the game ends, be that at the end of turn 5 or earlier if in organized play and the time for the round runs out, then the model is killed and no one gets credit for having killed it, which can work for or against some schemes and strategies. Let's take a look at examples to illustrate these rules about burying and unburying. Buried models are removed from the table but are still in play. In this game between a Tony Ironside's M and SU crew and a Lady Justice Death Touched Marshal crew, the Death Marshals use their Peacebringer blades to hack up a Drudge model. Since the Drudge was killed, the model and its stat card are both removed from the playing area. Later, a Death Marshal successfully uses his Pine Box attack against Tony's totem, Mouse. This attack buries Mouse, so his model is removed from the table, but not the game. The M-U player puts the model on Mouse's stat card to keep it in mind when it comes time to activate. Buried models cannot be targeted by actions or abilities. While he's buried, Mouse is safe from attacks by the guild for the most part. The Domador de Cadaveres cannot hit him with the Decay attack, the Lone Marshal can't shoot him with his Long Carbine, and the Judge can't hit him with her Enchanted Katana. The Death Marshal, however, uses his Pine Box on a Union Steamfitter and buries that model too. In this attack, the Death Marshal declares the Leeching Strength trigger, which says to choose a buried model. At this point, both Mouse and the Union Steamfitter are buried. The Death Marshal chooses Mouse to suffer one damage. When Lady Justice, Death Touched, activates, she reminds her Arcanist opponent that she has the Beyond Time ability, which allows her actions to target buried models. She swings her balanced sword into the space between dimensions and hacks at the Union Steamfitter with no regard to range or line of sight 
because the buried models are everywhere and nowhere all at once. The steam fitter dies, but does not drop a corpse marker since she's not on the table. We'll address this again later. Buried models activate, but cannot take actions. The Marshall crew and the MSU crew alternate activations like normal, but when it comes time for mouse to activate, the Arcanist player activates mouse, but cannot take any of the actions on mouse's card because mouse has no actions or abilities that say they can be taken while buried. The pine box action that buried him now requires him to perform a willpower duel, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Game effects related to a buried model's position are ignored. If Lady Justice were to use her equilibrium attack, which drops a shockwave marker, Mouse would be in no danger of being affected by it, even though Lady Justice's Beyond Time allows her actions to target buried models. Shockwaves have an effect in relation to their distance from nearby models, and since Mouse is everywhere and nowhere at the same time, he ignores the shockwave while buried. Similarly, if Lady Justice were to target the buried mouse with her Ashwood Coffin attack, which creates a 50mm coffin marker in addition to other effects, the guild player would skip creating the marker because the target, mouse, is not on the table, so there's no base to put it into contact with. The next effect is to give the target distracted plus one, so that can happen. Buried models cannot be more buried. Same for unbury. The third effect of the Ashwood Coffin is to bury the model. Since Mouse is already buried, we can ignore that as well. When unburying, read the freaking card. The text of the Pine Box attack that buried Mouse says, when the target activates, it must attempt a target number 13 willpower duel. If it passes, unbury it into base contact with this model, which is the death marshal that buried him. Alternatively, if that death marshal is killed or buried itself, then Mouse would unbury into base contact with it before it is removed from the table. Generally, the unbury terms are pretty straightforward, though you may have to look around to find them. Colette Dubois has a sword trick bonus action that can bury the targeted model that then simply unburies next to an enemy scheme marker anywhere on the table on its next activation. The trigger on sword trick, however, can bury Colette instead. She also has the fade away resistance trigger that also can bury her. But how does she unbury? The answer to that is found in her showstopper ability that explains what to do if she is buried at the time her activation begins, regardless of how she was buried. But what happens if a model that comes with its own unbury ability, like Colette Dubois, is buried by another model's game effect, like the Death Marshal's Pine Box? The important rule to remember at times like this is that when multiple game effects occur simultaneously, like at the start of this model's activation, or when this model activates, the player controlling the model decides the order in which those effects are resolved. If Colette were buried by a Death Marshal's Pine Box, she could choose to use her Showstopper ability to unbury and base contact with a friendly Performer model or Scheme Marker, eliminating the need for the Willpower duel at all. Or, if she wanted to get back into base contact with that no-good dirty Death Marshal that put her in the box, she could elect to perform the Willpower duel first. Since neither of these game effects say she may unbury, she must do one or the other. Now let's take this a few steps further for the purpose of illustrating how layered this process could become. In a different game, Jin Bakara is in a Last Blossom crew and starts a game buried. His undercover ability says he may choose to unbury at the start of his activation. If he doesn't, he remains buried from turn to turn with nothing to do but use his enemy intel action, which says it can be taken while buried. In turn 3, he unburies in base contact with a death marshal, bouncing the marshal back to his deployment zone and gaining slow. He then finishes his activation doing whatever and winds up on a concealing shadow marker. Misaki Katanaka, Fractured, is Jin's crew leader. She uses the Wrapped in Darkness trigger on her Twisting Paths attack to bury Jin again. Jin now has two options to unbury when he next activates. The text on Misaki's action says Jin may unbury in base contact with a shadow marker, while Jin's original undercover ability says Jin may unbury next to an enemy minion like he did before. 
When Jin activates again, he has his choice of which unbury effect he wants to use, or he can choose to remain buried, since they both say, may unbury. Let's say Lady Justice, Death Touched, successfully targets Jin with her Ashwood Coffin Attack action while he's buried. She skips the coffin marker and gives Jin Distracted plus one. She can't bury him further, but this attack imposes another unbury circumstance that says he must follow. Jin now has three unbury options that he can resolve in any order he wishes. Since his undercover ability and Misaki's Wrapped in Darkness both say may unbury, he can shrug those off, but Lady Justice's attack says Jin must attempt a willpower duel. Jin can avoid the willpower duel by unburying next to a shadow marker and removing it, or by unburying next to a martial minion and gaining slow, which he already has, so that can't get any worse. If he does neither of those, then he must take the duel. If he fails it, then he remains buried, since he will have already opted out of the other two unbury conditions. If he wins the duel, he unburies in base contact with a martial keyword model or coffin marker of the guild player's choice within three inches of Lady Justice, which could include Lady Justice herself. Usually, it won't get this complicated, but that's why it's crucial to read the card and pay close attention to the wording of each game effect. If the unburying model cannot be placed normally, it is placed inside its deployment zone. Back to our buried mouse. If he passes his willpower duel when he activates, he should be placed in base contact with the Death Marshal that buried him wherever the guild player wants him to go, according to the text of the Pine Box attack, since the controller of the unbury effect chooses the placement. But say the Arcanist player was trying to kill that Death Marshal in order to force the unbury by hitting the Death Marshal with a bunch of steam arachnids. With the steam arachnids surrounding the Death Marshal, there is no legal place for Mouse to unbury. Mouse is then forced to unbury in his own deployment zone. Normally, the guild player would control the unbury location, but since the placement of Mouse cannot be fulfilled according to the Death Marshal's card, the owner of the buried model, the Arcanist player, places the unburying model anywhere inside the Arcanist deployment zone. Unburying gets around cannot move effects. Back to our last Blossom Marshal game for this next example. Jin Bakara unburies through his undercover ability, and while he's on the table, the judge hits him with Crumble Away, which gives him the staggered condition. Misaki Katanaka Fractured buries Jin as previously described. When it's his time to activate in the next turn, one might argue that he cannot choose the unbury terms from Misaki since he has staggered, which prevents movement by the effects of other friendly models, but bury and unbury Ignore this restriction. Jin can elect to unbury through either his or Misaki's unbury conditions, or neither. If he returns to the table, he still must deal with the staggered condition until the end of his activation. If he elects to remain buried, he can use his enemy intel action until he ends his activation, at which time the staggered condition ends while he is still buried. Models killed while buried do not drop markers. While Jin is still buried, death-touched Lady Justice might choose to get rid of the Enforcer before he can screw with her fate deck anymore. When she hacks him up with her balanced sword, he does not drop a corpse marker because he's not really on the table. His model and card are now removed from the playing area, but there are no remains of him on the table, just like happened with the Union Steamfitter in the earlier example. If a model is buried at the end of the game, it is killed to no one's credit. If Lady Justice doesn't kill Jin and he remains buried until the end of the game, he will automatically be killed in the end phase before victory points are scored. Say that in his game the guild player revealed that Jin was the target of the Take Prisoner scheme. The end condition for that scheme says the guild player needs to have a model engaging Jin, or Jin needs to have been killed by a friendly model. When Jin dies as a result of being buried at the end of the game, no one gets credit for having killed him, and the Marshal crew does not score the second victory point for their scheme. Here are those ten rules one more time. 
Burying and unburying can be one of the trickiest game effects to handle because it very often affects enemy models more than friendly models and if you are not expecting or used to playing with burying, it can disrupt the rhythm of your game when your opponent starts throwing it at you. If your crew uses bury effects and your opponent is not accustomed to them, play the friendly game by helping your opponent understand the unbury conditions and what the models can and cannot do while buried. Either way, if you both remember or refer back to these 10 rules of burying and unburying, your game will go as smoothly as anything else in Malifaux. That's the overview of burying and unburying. Pick up a printable set of all the markers and tokens you need to play Malifaux in the War Game Vault. If you haven't already, join our Patreon for early, ad-free access to all new content, and be sure to visit the Malifaux University gift shop for the latest in Malifaux-themed shirts, hoodies, drinkware, and more. Links are in the notes below. And remember, play friendly games, keep it simple, and have fun. 